Sorry guys, checking my teeth. Last night I had a dream that I was one of the members, one of the pirates on Captain Hook's crew. And we ran into the Lost Boys and one of the Lost Boys told me that I was the scariest of the pirates because I had yellow teeth. Weird. But anyway, the yellow teeth thing brings me to our current art project that we're going to be doing today, which is coffee stain birdhouses. We're going to actually use coffee as our paint in making our coffee stain birdhouses. Now, these compositions are what's called monochromatic, which means of one color. Monochromatic, that's like our art term for the day. And I always have a hard time remembering monochromatic, but I don't have a hard time remembering chromatic, which means of colors or lots of colors. And the way I'm able to remember that is when I was little, there was this Dungeons and Dragons cartoon and there was this dragon named Tiamat and she had all these different colored heads. And each head was a different color. She was the chromatic dragon. So that's how I always remember that. So a mono chromatic means of one color. It'd just be a one-headed dragon that has one color head. Did I make it more confusing? We're going with one color, coffee stain color. Now, on supplies for this, there's a number of supplies that we can be using. First thing is how we're gonna put the coffee on the piece of paper. Traditional tool, you would use a paintbrush, but let's say you don't have a paintbrush. Rolled up piece of paper. You just roll up a piece of paper until you have a point at the end. I'd probably make a couple of these because once they get soggy dipping them in the coffee, it's kind of gross. You might need a few of them. But in any case, just rolled up a piece of paper. I actually did this guy right here using a rolled up piece of paper so it can be done. And for those of you who don't have rolled up pieces of paper, Q-tip. Q-tip has a lot less detail, but you can still do the project. I suggest you doing it larger if you need a q-tip. So rolled up piece of paper, brush, or q-tip. Now for those of you who don't have coffee, which is it just blows my mind, but for those of you who don't have coffee, watercolor. And a lot of you don't have watercolor, but remember if you do have watercolor, you could use this instead. We're doing a composition which is monochromatic. What's that mean? It means of one color. So if you use this, you would only use one color from your gigantic selection here. Yeah, you just choose one of them and that is what you would use. Now, if you don't have watercolor and you don't have coffee, you could use a really dark soda. I actually suggest against that because it really doesn't sting quite as well as it should. Maybe jolt wood or like a really nasty Pepsi or something like that. But you could use that. You could also use food coloring. Kool-Aid works. I just open up the packet, pour a little water in, comes out super condensed color. It's awesome. Just stay monochromatic, stay with one color. So Kool-Aid, soda will work. Uh, our watercolor paints, Oh, mud. You could go out, get some good quality dirt, put it in a bowl, add some water, and you could use mud. But we're going to pretend that we all have access to 
coffee. And I'm going to start this guy off by going cross-curricular, which is the teaching form of going off-roading. I'm going to teach you another skill, a life skill, which is going to be how to make coffee so that we can make the paint for making our coffee birdhouses. Oh, really quick. If you're like, birds are dumb, I don't like birdhouses. Well... You could do a coffee stain goblin head. Now, goblins can look like just about anything. So all you need are two eyes and nose and some nasty teeth and pointy ears. And we do a coffee stain goblin. So, birdhouse, goblin. Mr. Bishop, why can't I just do anything? Why do I have to do a birdhouse or a coffee stain goblin head? Why can't I do a flower? or a butterfly, or a unicorn? The answer, and I love this quote, I think I made it up. I'm pretty sure I made this quote up, which is creativity blooms in the realm of restriction. A lot of fancy words right there. And basically what that means is if you're given limitations, your creativity works better. If someone gives you a pencil and says, draw anything, you're usually like, I'm stumped. What do I draw? It doesn't have that much meaning. Whereas if someone says to you, uh, here's a pencil and you've got to draw it on a blue piece of cardboard and I want you to draw either a goblin head or a birdhouse. And let's say you don't even like those things. You're like, goblins are dumb. And I don't even know how to draw pointy ears or squinty eyes or a bulbous nose. And birdhouses are for, you know, country craft people or something like that. The challenge to your creativity would be, how do you make that interesting? How do you make that birdhouse something that you are interested in drawing? Or that goblin something that you do like to do? And that's what gets your creativity really going, is making it your own. Restrictions. Creativity blooms in the realm of restriction. It's a for real. All right. Back to the coffee maker and our cross-curricular skills. Now, this is an old style coffee maker. Most of you have K-cups now. So let me give you a demonstration of a K-cup. Take the K-cup, boom, put it in there, close it, add the water. No, add the water first in the back. And then boop, 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 press some of the buttons and it comes out. K-cup is an awesome way to go for this. What you're really saving is the K-cup itself after it's been used. So you can make mom and dad a coffee or yourself. If you're an older person watching this, shame on you. And uh, you then take the K-cup, you peel off the top, and that's what we're actually using. And in this case, what we're going to be using after we're done is the used filter. That's going to be the palette for our paint.